super quick lunchtime presentation on just really how to get a, a quick look at how to get the most from those SLA data reports and uh, just show you some of the, the background ways that, uh, that you can navigate those. So if we look at uh, what we want to accomplish in the next few minutes, let me just advance the slides here. So my name is Sherry Johnston and I am supporting ARPDC on behalf of uh, from Edmonton Regional Learning Consortium. Sorry, I'll get going here. So the agenda for today, real quick, is how to access those reports, uh, what we do with a class report and what that will tell us. We'll look at the individual report and a couple of thoughts to help you interpret the data and then time for any questions. So welcome to everyone who's taken a few minutes to, to connect on the webinar. So let's start. Uh, just a good reminder about what SLAs are all about. And Alberta Education is really clear that they're not meant for any kind of provincial reporting. They don't go on the pillars of accountability. They're really there to guide instruction. They're very helpful for informing both uh, yourselves, students, and parents about the progress and, and how the students are doing in their learning. It can be really helpful to select appropriate resources. And it's also informative for our administrators. So let's jump into how to access the reports. I suspect most teachers are fairly familiar at this point with their dashboard, but it's clearly indicated on your dashboard under the reports tab. And the reports, the good thing to know is that they remain available to you until the end of the school year. And uh, that could be a conversation you may want to have with your administrator and or your district because at the very end of June, these reports will disappear. So if the school feels it's helpful to archive them in student files, those could be a conversation you may need to have. So let's look at a couple things to think about when we jump into the reports. Just a reminder that it's easy to get confused whether you're on the literacy results or the numeracy results, so to make sure you're always kind of double checking where you are. And I'm going to show you four ways to sort the results and how that can also lead to a customized view. So I'll explain that in just a minute when we jump onto the screenshots. One more thing I wanted to remind teachers of is that the results come back correct, partially correct, and incorrect. So we'll take a look again closer at what that means. And just a tiny note, uh, I know for a long time as teachers we really wanted to calculate that raw score and parents may sit down with you and say, so what's my child's score? And we're really trying to shift from looking at a total to actually looking at strengths and areas for growth. Because when we get to the reports you'll see that there is no final score provided for a student. Now let's start with the summer report. This is the big picture and there's so much data that uh, if I was in your shoes as a teacher I would definitely start with the class report because I'm a big picture person so I want to see at a glance how my class did. So it's a one page uh, document that you can print or you, of course you see it on your dashboard so let's zoom in a little bit and if I go too fast or you need another tour you know that there's that guided tour at any time on your dashboard that can walk you through this again. So Let's take a little closer look at each of these components. First of all, the upper level is the difficulty levels. This is the top half, and uh, there's a couple of things I want you to notice. There's a print button, so again, you can always print this, and you will print the class and or student individual reports from here. Again, I'm going to just remind you that there's an English literacy and a numeracy tab to be cognizant of. And then let's look closer at the bar graph. So this is how your students did. And you can see where most of your class performed in relation to the provincial standard, which is pretty typical. Uh, it seems to stay at difficulty number three. So I'll just show you a little bit more about what that means. Because this is a question that often gets asked. What is a difficulty level? So what's happened is uh, at Alberta Education, when they were doing the pilot work, they brought in teachers from across the province. And they read through all the questions. And they really looked at what could students reasonably do based on grade two programs of study, but knowing that they are at the beginning of grade three. So they sat down and wrote out carefully what the characteristics of a student who is working at each level would look like. And, and of course validated from across the province. So you can print out 
the definitions of the difficulty levels and really get a good idea of scale 1 to 5. And I find this is a really helpful conversation to have with parents when you start looking at the report. So back to where we were. Here's a really handy dandy feature on your report. And if you haven't discovered this, you're going to love this. So if you click on each of the bars in your report, you will see the names of students highlighted above. And it'll immediately tell you who met the standard, who's above, and who's below. And I love this because at a glance, I can see who my difficulty one kids are. And I can see who my four or fives are. Just at a glance, I can see right away who might need some additional challenge, who's going to need some interventions. And we can look a little closer at that. So from there, you start to scroll down your report. And we look at how the class performed on each question. So three things you can do with this graph to manipulate the data. If you can see just above the set of bar graphs, there's a sort by options, kind of got a pink number two beside it. There's four ways you can sort your data, and it shuffles the results on this bar graph. Now, if you click on a colored section, so for example, I want to see how kids did on this general outcome question number eight, because I'm seeing a huge red result there. So I'm thinking, wow, most of my group got that question eight wrong. And so if I want to see um, who did OK and who struggled, I just click on that entire bar, and all the class names pop up. And then if I click on it again, I can actually see what the question was. So really helpful points of contact right from here. And in fact, this is where I would spend most of my time initially, because I really want a sense of how it went. So if I click on one of those colored bars, I get this descriptor. So I get something that shows me at the very top uh, the difficulty level of that question, how many of my students got it completely correct, green check mark, how many got it partially correct, yellow check mark, and how many uh, got it incorrect. So from here, I can see what the question was and also which outcomes it's tied to, as well as the literacy, knowledge, and understanding components. So most teachers, I hope, have figured out both the partially correct, but I'll just touch on it to be clear. In literacy, for example, this is one of the sample questions they put out where students would be asked to make note of the activities during the week of September, and they would move all those little cards below onto the calendar. So of course, if they didn't move all the cards correctly, that would become a partially correct question. If we take a look at this sample numeracy question, you can see that in this case, uh, students would have to figure out how many squares, circles, rectangles, and triangles are in this picture. And of course, they may get some of that correct or incorrect. So what's really unique about our SLAs is that it's the first time we have a test uh, of this nature where students can get partial credit for what they can do. And it does give us some valuable information about how well they handle multiple facts and, and bits of information and how how deeply they're thinking and, and where they're starting to go into trouble. So this can be very informative for us to see uh, to what level they're performing. So back to the class report, just kind of that whole big picture. If there's any questions on the class report, feel free to jump in or pop them on the post. But uh, this is really where I would spend some time, because you're going to get your best results here. Because realistically, it's very challenging in our busy lives to spend time analyzing student by student each of those individual results. So I'm strongly suggesting that most teachers will find, and the feedback's been that they find this the best place to start, and to start navigating how the class did and, and how they broke out on each question. So let's zoom in a little bit. If there's no questions, I'll uh, move on to the student report. On the student report, this is what shows up the top half of their screen. So I've got Camilla here, and I've clicked on Camilla, and I can tell I'm on her numeracy results. And I can see at a glance that uh, she's at level three. And it actually pops up that definition of level three right there. So it gives me a sense of where the test is, is placing her. And you can also see on that green bar where she falls on the level three. So she's just slightly below the midpoint on level three. So she's 
at the provincial standard, but just slightly on the weaker side of it. And so that white dot placement is actually uh, has meaning, and you will see it'll change for your different students. Now, at the very top right, you'll see that I'm on Camila's file, but if I actually click that pull down menu, this is from here. I can choose each student and navigate my class this way. The teacher's comment falls just below that green bar, and you have the option of keeping comments here and they'll be private for you unless you choose to print them out publicly on the printout which you will access from the top right and on the bottom of the screen this is where you start to see how Camilla did on each of the questions so what's uh, helpful here is that uh, we can start to look at how to sort these so let's move forward and I'll start to dig into this a little bit more for you so Looking at the bottom half of Camilla's report, what do we notice? On every student's results, uh, this particular test, there's usually between 32 to 36 questions. And how the website sets it up, this dashboard, is it actually almost lays them out. I think of them like playing cards. And so how do I want to see all 36 playing cards displayed for each question and get a sense of how my student did? So this is where I start to ask myself, what order do I want to see these in? Personally, I don't really want to see them questions 1 to 32 necessarily. I might want to see all the incorrect ones first, or I might want to see them by level of difficulty. So I have to really ask myself, how am I going to sort these? Because okay, otherwise, uh, it just becomes data that's just overwhelming. So if I look at my options, I've jumped back to a literacy choice. Here you can sort by the general outcomes. So GO1, GO2, GO3, uh, the level. Is it a level one question, a level five question? I personally love the literacy elements because this talks about how well they know the rules of language, how good they are at constructing meaning, how good they are at uh, acquiring info. So I personally really love this new component. Personally, I don't think, like I said, I would go through question numbers necessarily. And then again, how well they did with their responses. So you can choose, but you can toggle this. And we can go. One level further on the customized view, you'll see a gray box. And a lot of people miss this. If you click that gray box, not only will I sort them by literacy element, but my cards will also shuffle to one more level of sort. So within each of my literacy elements, it will sort it by whichever here I've clicked off. So there's lots and lots of options for sorting to get down to the data. So back to the question card, if I'm at the student um, if I'm on the students, it will show me, if you can see top left, here's how Jane answered. And if I toggle to that other little option, so I'm near the top of the screen there. So if I choose Jane's response, I see exactly what Jane put. And if I toggle to that answer key button, I can see what the answer is. So it becomes a bit challenging because you have to toggle back and forth between what Jane said and what the answer is. But if you really need to drill down to a deep understanding of of what she was doing and that close analysis, this is where you can do it. I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions on the student results, uh, let me know. Otherwise, uh, just a reminder that you can print out the report to share with parents if you'd like. Personally, I would stop almost below the green bar because I really don't want to get into a long conversation about, about her question by question results, I really want them to understand what level she's performing at, and more importantly, what my next uh, learning goals are for this child. So the SLA people, um, Albert Ed clearly indicates that SLA results are to be shared with parents, but how you do that is a local decision, whether it's at the classroom, school, or district level. But again, if you, if you want to print these off and have them handy at your parent-teacher nights, that's probably a simple way to do it and kind of go from there. So interpreting the data, last two slides here, uh, we have created, I, I'm going to encourage you to make note of this little website, padlet.com slash ERLC slash SLA3. There are two documents, one for literacy, one for numeracy, that pulls out every single outcome 
in our programs of study in grade two and three and identifies which were tested this year on the SLAs and it's a perfect place to make your notes and to start to figure out what needs to come next. So teachers have been using these for the last couple of years and we've had really wonderful feedback. So I strongly encourage you to check out the Padlet. We have loaded up tons and tons of intervention re resources, our favorite tools. So I think you're going to find that an invaluable resource. And that's really us kind of wrapping it up. If you have any further questions on SLAs, feel free to stay online. Otherwise, contact your regional consortia office. Someone can help you there. And just to note, if you're in the Edmonton area, we have a collaborative marking session on October 27th. So you are welcome to come along and do some marking together with us. So for that, I thank everyone for your time. And I wish you all the best with your SLAs. And we'll sign off there.